to you. That's what they tell you now, you know, when you go on tour. Nobody wants you to read to them. So I won't. Anybody have a question on anything? You can ask me about CIA, you can ask me about bands. Yes, yes. How did you start your career? Like, how did you start selling your books? Oh my God. I, yeah. <laughs> I have the career that you don't want to emulate. Like I said, I started out as a journalist when I was 16. I was a stringer for newspapers, and in my early 20s, I started as a music critic, and there were no jobs for newspaper people, so I worked part-time on the side. But foolishly, when I went to college, I thought, I'm going to be a novelist. You know, no. No, that's not how it works. And my family kept saying, you got to get some life experiences so you have something to write about. So uh, to get a life experience, I ended up uh, taking some tests that the National Security Agency gave. Because back then, there weren't so many mathematicians and computer scientists and electrical engineers, because there weren't even computers. Um, so they gave you tests, and I tested really well. So they said, we'd like you to come to Washington and work for us. And I said, you know, I'm going to be a novelist. You know, I'll come for a few years just to get the experience, and then I'll leave. 30 years later, there I was. So, like Keith W. at 40, must be the magic age, I woke up and I said, you know, I always wanted to be a novelist. I've mastered a lot of things. At that point, I was what they called a senior intelligence analyst. I knew how hard it was to really master a complex subject. I said, I'm going to try to learn to write a novel. I'll, I'll never get it published, but I'm going to try. Ten years, I went back to school, I plotted away at it every night, right? That's what it takes, I think. Um, I belong to a lot of writers' organizations. One is International Thriller Writers, which is a wonderful organization if you write commercial thriller and mystery types of books because they're the biggest authors in the world are in, in that organization and they're all very accessible. But one thing they tell you is 10 years for books. The average author, and this is for commercial fiction, takes 10 years and four books before they write a book that's publishable. I cannot say I was any different. It took me 10 years to write this book and I wrote other books in between. So, um, is that what you wanted to hear? You want to hear the gory details, like how do you get an agent and, and how do you find a publisher, which is impossible. Did you get an agent? I did. Like every other writer on the face of the earth, I submitted my book too soon and got many rejection letters. But when I did the last revision, I knew the book was ready. I sent it to two agents. This is where you're all going to just like hate me. Don't hate me. They both wanted it. The book actually sold at auction. And um, thank you. <laughs> um, and so Simon Schuster publishes it in the US, and Random House actually publishes it in English in the rest of the world. We sold translation rights in 11 languages, I think. It's doing really well in the UK, in Poland, Spain, and Italy. It just launched a little while ago in Italy. And I know you're all thinking, why have I never heard of this book? Well, one reason is I had to go head to head with the Night Circus last year in September. Yes. It sucked all the air out of the room. Yes, ma'am. Whose idea was it to do a trilogy? I mean, was it yours or were you <laughs> No, I mean, it was my idea. It was written as a standalone originally. And afterwards, um, I must have lost my mind. No. Um, I did kind of miss the characters. It's, you know, the writers in the audience can imagine. You spend a lot of time with these, pe these people, and you miss them when they're gone. And I started to think of this wild trajectory that the story could go on. And I thought some sane adult person would stop me, but they both were like, that sounds great, here you go. Uh, both publishers, actually, Random House and Simon & Schuster, both said, you know, to now I look back and I go, oh my god, what were they thinking? Because nowadays you practically have to be vetted by, you know, the president's security detail before they'll give you a book contract. But at the time it was much easier. Anyway, it is, um, I'm, I'm just gobsmacked that the reviews on this book, which I only had 20 months to write, are very good. And um, I will say, like I said, this, this book is not what you probably think it is. You look at this and you think, vampire romance. It is not. It is not a vampire romance. It is a crazy wild dark ride, and it just, where it ends up, you'll never see it coming, believe me. Yes, ma'am. Well, I, I read 
The Taker, and I loved it. It was, it was the, the, like the best kind of book to read. I mean, it really did feel like a fairy tale for grown-ups in this kind of dark, sexy way. I like, love you. I just couldn't put it down, and I, I mean, I, I just loved it. So, but I'm wondering, you you were gonna you kind of gave us a teaser here. It's based on a fairy tale, so I oh, would yeah, love that's to hear right. what the fairy tale is. You'll never guess what the fairy tale for this book is, but if you think about it, it's the story about a girl who's in a rush to grow up and become a real woman. Because the time when she was growing up. You know, you're only allowed to be a child until you're about six in those times. And after that, you were treated like a little adult. But you didn't really start your world until you were married and you had your, your own household and that sort of thing. So for her, she knew she would not really be recognized as, as an individual until she got married. So she was, maybe before she really knew what she wanted. She wanted Jonathan and she wanted to be in an adult relationship before she really knew what it meant to be a real woman. Does that sound like anything to you? Pinocchio. Pinocchio is the story of a puppet who wants to be a real boy. And he's given the chance, he's given the opportunity, but along the way, he's seduced off the path of goodness and truth. You know, and he meets Mr. Fox and Mr. Cat, and they seduce him off the path. And he has all these dark adventures, ad adventures, and finally it's the Blue Fairy who saves him. And that's the backbone of the taker. There are some scenes that are very close to Pinocchio. So the second book, The Reckoning, is Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. But probably in a way you'll never recognize, and Disney would probably soon be sure <laughs> saying those words. I think I'm out of time. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it.